So 8.5 deals with factoring special products, meaning we're going to be looking for a pattern in our trinomials, and if we have it, then factoring is going to be a literal piece of cake. So that's going to be two different kinds of things. Perfect square trinomials and differences of perfect squares, both of which should sound slightly familiar because we did discuss them in Chapter 7. So a trinomial is a perfect square if it is of the form a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. What this boils down to in practice is the first term has to be a perfect square. The second term has to be a perfect square. And the middle term has to be 2 times the square roots of those perfect squares. Okay, let me walk you through this. So the examples say determine if it's a perfect square trinomial, and if it is, we'll factor. If not, we're going to tell why it isn't. x squared plus 12x plus 36. x squared, the first term, is a perfect square. It is just x squared, which means its square root is x. The third term is 36. 36 is a perfect square. Its square root is 6. The middle term is 12x. So the square root is x, the square root is 6. If I take these two, combine them and double, and by combine I just mean multiply, do I get the middle term? 6 times 2 is 12 with the x is 12x. That's what I need to see. This means this is x plus 6 quantity squared. It's x plus 6 times x plus 6. This is how a perfect square trinomial works. So long as the pattern holds out then the factorization is just x, or the square root of the first term, the square root of the third term, and the sine of the middle term in between. So the square root of x squared is x. That's where the x comes from. The square root of 36 is 6. That's where the 6 comes from. And it is this plus sign that tells us to put a plus sign. So let me show you that again. The square root of 4x squared. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of x squared is x. So that's 2x. The square root of 9 is 3. Let's smudge those together. And double it. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 2x is 12x. That's what I need. So we take the 2x, we take the 3, they go in parentheses, it's going to be that term squared, and we take the sine of b, which means that negative sign is what's going to come in between. This is 2x minus 3 quantity squared. Okay. Check the pattern. What is the square root of x squared? x. What is the square root of 16? 4. Combine these and double. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times x is 8x. L. Oh. This isn't a perfect square. It doesn't fit the pattern. This next one, x squared minus 4x minus 4, if you go through the pattern, you're going to be inclined to think it works. 
because the square root is x, square root is 2, 2, don't forget we double, 2 times 2 is 4 times x is 4x, and this looks good. But there's one massive problem, and that is right there. In a perfect square trinomial, the third term must be positive. Okay. So if you're asked to explain why for this last time, last problem, last example, I should say, of this section, we would just say third term is negative. And why this one it is because middle term not 2ab. I realize there's no a and b here, but it's the short form notation of saying the middle term didn't fit the pattern. So that's one pattern you got to look for. You're learning two patterns today. That's one of them. The second is the difference of two squares, which the pattern is actually a whole lot easier. If you have a perfect square minus another perfect square, then you can factor it as the square roots, one added, one subtracted for binomials. So determine if each is a difference of two squares, which is simply, can we take the square root of both of them? And is it subtraction? If yes, we'll factor. If not, it's gonna be because something's not a perfect square or it's addition. So let me show you. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 81 is 9. That means this is x plus 9 times x minus 9. That's it. The square root of 9p to the fourth. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of p to the fourth is p squared. Okay. When it comes to exponents, they have a square root if they are even it is half of the exponent if the exponent is odd it doesn't have a square root square root of 16 is 4 the square root of q squared is q it is subtraction so it's going to be 3p squared plus 4q times the quantity 3p squared minus 4q This is just validating that the pattern holds and then throwing out an answer. And let me just do that real fast so that it lets me write. Here, next term, the square root of x to the sixth. x to the sixth is even, so it's half of the exponent, so it's x to the third. Square root of 7y squared, what row? Square root of 7 is a problem. So this is not difference of squares. And why? 7y squared is not a perfect square. The 7 causes the problem. Last example. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4x squared is 2x, so we're in business. 1 plus 2x, 1 minus 2x.